So President Biden saying that he'll release 30 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, claiming, he says, it will help ease the squeeze of surging gas prices. These steps will help blunt gas prices here at home. But I know news about what's happening can seem alarming to all Americans. But I want you to know we're going to be OK. We're going to be OK. When the history of this era is written, Putin's war in Ukraine will have left Russia weaker and the rest of the world stronger. So AAA tells us that gas is at uh, $366 a gallon, up four cents since yesterday, and more than 30 cents from just a month ago. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, also a Fox News contributor. Nice to see you here in our nation's capital. This is the, yeah, it's good to see you in person. The city that time forgot. I used to say that about New York until I came back to Washington, D.C. Yeah. But the mandates are gone now. That's yes. a good thing. Um, how are we situated right now? How's our strategy? Uh, well, we don't have a strategy. I think you have a you have a president who, I, I thought it was really frightening after I watched the whole thing and thought about it for a while, because either he knows he's lying, and so he goes and gives a speech the whole world's watching in the middle of a war, but he gives it anyway knowing it's a lie, or he doesn't know he's lying, which may be even more frightening. He may believe this stuff. I mean, the thing you just said, you know, he's releasing. Uh, one and a half days oil supply for the United States. One and a half days. And the world market's very sophisticated. So the price went up because they said, well, that's not a strategy. Uh, he told us if you could afford to buy an electric car, you can save $80 a month in, at the gas station. Right. Now, <laughs> the average person out there trying to get to work, paying, we were, Chris and I were in Los Angeles last week, and it was like we saw one place that was $6.60 for a wow. premium. You know, that person driving a used car trying to get to work is not going to feel helped that if only they could buy an electric car, which, by the way, uses electricity, which California doesn't have enough of. But uh, also, what about our it's crazy. What about the national security angle when it comes to energy? You remember the all of the above energy strategy, which makes sense. And we've you, you just there was nothing last night that would tell you that we are not going to make the same mistake as Europe has done over the past 25 years. Well, no, you have, to, you have to assume that Europhiles like John Kerry want us mm -hmm. to make the same mistakes. I mean, if we work hard, we too can become Germany and, and France. And in a sense, we already have. You have a president who, in the middle of trying to pressure Putin, is begging Putin to pump more, ga more oil when oil is the largest single source of revenue for Russia. Yeah. So the, the difference between the Trump price at $46 a barrel, and I think it was $107 last night after, after... 111 this morning. 111 this morning. The difference is more than paying for the war. So you can talk about all these sanctions, but all, all Putin has to do is look at the bank account, and every morning the U.S. is buying more Russian oil. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator McConnell's coming up in a few moments here. We'll see if there's a crack in that policy momentarily. Let me take you back to last night. This is yeah. a, a moment that I'm, I'm sure that you and Republicans would like to hear. Call for number one, guys. Watch. Let's come together and protect our communities, restore trust, and hold law enforcement accountable. The answer is not to defund the police. It's to fund the police. So when he was in New York about a month ago, he said something similar. You look at the polling here, and Democrats are getting hammered on this issue regarding crime. Um, I imagine you agree with what he had to say I do. at that point. Look, I, I was the speaker when Bill Clinton came in and announced the era of big government is over. <clears throat> so, you know, it's great. Now, in Clinton's case, we held him to it. So, so probably Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell ought to introduce a bill Monday to radically fund the police and challenge places like Seattle, Portland, to actually hire enough police, uh, and then see whether that Biden is for it. You know, on that point, and Dana talks about this a lot, uh, rhetorical lift, uh, she refers to in speeches. Um, and what you just mentioned is something from the mid-90s that everyone who follows political history can, can recall. Right. The era of big government is over. Right. Why was he incapable of delivering a memorable line like that at such a critical point for the country and for the world? Well, first of all, he's not Bill Clinton. I mean, he's, this, this is a guy who can't give a good speech under any circumstance. And as he gets older, the circumstances get smaller. Uh, so, I mean, Biden's just not a very good speechmaker. Second, um, Clinton made a real strategic decision. Yes. He decided, after we won in 94, uh, he decided, in a big fight with his staff, 
that he was going to become a centrist. It was Dick Mor Morris helped invent it. It was called triangulation. You had Gingrich and the Republicans over here, you had Gephardt and the Democrats over here, and you had Bill Clinton in the middle. Well, the left hated it. I mean, the left, it's, it's one of the things, burdens that Hillary's carried ever since. The left has gone, wait a second, you're our champion. What do you mean you're triangulating? So but he's, did the president last night do anything to help his falling poll numbers, with, especially with independents and suburban women? Look, it, it may be my bias because I used to be speaker, but I thought the damage that uh, Nancy Pelosi did sitting behind him looking like an over-eager cheerleader, jumping up and down. It's towards the end, she's manic. I mean, it's, a, it's bizarre. It did seem like there was a memo that had gone out about a lot of um, cheers and applause. There were 91 well, applause lines last the night. The one line where Schumer starts to get up and apparently he's off script. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. You're right. You were paying attention last night, I can tell. I was. Well, I, I knew I was going to be with you guys, and I wanted to be prepared. Well, you're always on your game, Listen, and we thank you yeah. for being thank, here. Thank you for the context and the yeah. historical moment we as well. Thank you. you.